This video is a short history of the WSR-57 radar that was installed in Evansville, Indiana. Installation began in December 1959. It was one of the first 31 radars to be installed across the country. Evansville was in the group that included other locations such as Washington, D.C., Sacramento, California, St. Louis, Missouri, and Little Rock, Arkansas, to name a few. By the time the deployment was complete, which was not until the early 1970s, there were 66 WSR-57 radars across the country. The 76-foot tower was erected at Dress Regional Airport, next to Highway 41 on the north side of Evansville. The wavelength was 10 centimeters, and the maximum range was 250 nautical miles. The 12-foot diameter dish was designed to output 500 kilowatts of power, although it usually ran with less. You can see that the dish was put up on the deck first, then the dome was put over the dish to protect it from the elements. This 360 degree view is from the top of the 80 foot tower starting from the south. It's interesting to note the change that has occurred over the past 50 years. Inside the office, there were many pieces of equipment tied to the radar, including the console itself and a camera that would take pictures of what was on the scope. Some of those images are still available today from the National Climatic Data Center. Of course, workrooms were needed to keep the radar working. Here's a short video which was recorded in 1991 in the Evansville office. This is our weather service radar. This is a, again in operation 24 hours a day, 365 days a year for the safety of the people in the Tri-State area. This particular radar was bottled in 1957. So as you can tell, it's uh, well over 30 years old. It runs on tube technology, but it still works. We have good electronic technicians here that keep the thing running for us just about 24 hours a day, every day. This afternoon, we are showing some showers and a few thunderstorms, some with heavy rain, about 60 miles to the north of Evansville. Evansville is located in the center of the picture, and you can see a few echoes right around the middle, and that's called ground flutter. But the other echoes that we're picking out farther to our north, we coming up on those here in a second, are the showers and the thunderstorms located up near Robinson, Illinois at this time during the afternoon. We are picking up some more showers and a few thunderstorms moving into southern Illinois from parts of Missouri. The one good thing about this radar is that it enables us to stop and look at the storms themselves. It helps us determine how strong the storm, big the storms are. If I can stop the radar, center in and on a particular storm, and using our range height indicator, determine exactly how high up in the atmosphere these storms go. These particular storms go up about 30, 32,000 feet. That may not seem like it's too high, but then again, that's the area where most of our jet airplanes fly, about 30,000 feet. In the summer, with some of our stronger storms here in the tri-state, it's not t unusual to get storms that will go up to 60,000 feet, but we have even had some that have gone past 70,000 feet. Those are normally more of our stronger storms and possibly severe storms. This radar, again, allows us to look inside of each individual storm, and that is a good technique to help us to figure out whether these storms may be producing some severe weather. Now the radar basically works and tells us exactly how strong of a return it's getting, how heavy is the rain, and sometimes can indicate what kind of uh, hail is located within that particular storm. In order for us to check on these storms, we will go and talk with the sheriff's police, or the sheriff's department, or the state police post, 
located around the Triestate area or contact some of our spotters. Once we get all the information we need from this radar, it is then all written down on a particular form. Again, it's just another form we take observations from. Again, once every hour, it indicates how many storms we have or what kind of area coverage, where they're located, and again, what maximum tops are. Some of the stronger storms within the last hour had tops up to 37,000 feet. This information is then related to a computer system in the form of a radar observation. This particular one taken just a few minutes ago by the radar operator. This is all fed into a, the national computer system out in Washington, D.C. From that, the computer takes all this information and it can plot up where the storms are on a national map. That map is then transmitted to different users across the country. And it'll be the same map that you'll see on your evening news showing a radar depiction of where the rain is falling across the country in the United States. In 1992, the entire console was moved to the building next to the sheriff's office. Since the console was so heavy, it was quite a job to move it. Remember that things ran on tube technology back then. The original cost of the radar was about $150,000. In 2012 dollars, though, that would be about $1.2 million. Now, since the radar was operational for 37 years, I would say we got our money's worth.